So today's your lucky day. We're finally starting to take a look at creating an annotative drawing. We've done a lot of work of setting up our template for an annotative drawing. We've set up our textiles, our dimension styles, our leader styles. We've even set up our layout tab for an annotative title block. And so what we're going to get to today is by the end of this video, you'll create, you'll recreate this object that you see here. Okay, so this is something that we had created a while back when we were dealing with GDNT frames and datums. And so to create this drawing, what you'll need to do is go back and open up your drawing that you had. And mine, I went ahead and named it 12-7 uh, because that was the problem that it dealt with. So I'm just going to open it up. Currently, this is on an associative template. So I'm just going to do a simple copy and paste. So I'm just going to select all of the object that I've drawn and I'm going to come up here to clipboard and click on copy and after that I'm going to click on my new sheet of paper I'm going to click on my ACAD Anno template and open up an annotative template once I get that open I'm just going to paste that view in here okay so now that I have it in here I can go ahead and start working with it. The first thing is just to demonstrate the power of using annotation, annotation scale and annotative objects is I'm going to scale this object up. So just come up here, click on scale. Under select objects, just select the entire object. Hit enter to say I'm done selecting object objects. Select a base point, it can be anywhere. And then just type a scale factor of four. Okay, so we've got that part that's drawn in here and now we're ready to start putting dimensions and putting text on this drawing. So if I come over here and click on layout one, I already have my title block. So one of the things is before we do any dimensioning, before we create any text, we need to know what scale factor we're going to use. So with annotation text and annotation dimensioning, the way we set our scale is through our annotation scale. So once you're in paper space, that's this spot that looks like it's got a white background. If you click on the magenta border, that's a viewport. That viewport is looking into your model. It's looking at what you've created over here in model space. So go ahead and make sure that you've got that purple part selected. When you have that purple part selected, then your scale will come up down here. And we can select a scale, like for instance, a quarter inch equals an inch. Okay, I go ahead and set my scale for that viewport and it is looking at my object. So that looks like that's a good scale to use and I can get all my dimensions on there and get all my dimensions around there on that scale. So go back to model and now we need to set our scale up here. So there's really about four or five areas that you need to pay attention to when you're doing annotative objects. Okay, one's your annotation scale. So we want to go ahead and set that so that it matches our annotation scale from our layout. So set that to be a quarter inch equals one inch. Okay, the other two parts are going to be this icon right next to it, annotation visibility. You hover over it, it says it shows annotative objects for all scales. So if you have that turned on, no matter what scale your annotative object is set to, it's always going to show. Okay, so we'll take a look at that here in a little bit. The other one is the one right next to it, and this is this icon, when it's turned on, it'll automatically add the scale to annotative objects when the scale changes. So when you have this on, if you have a dimension on your drawing, you change your scale, that new scale gets added to the object. Okay. A couple other places that we need to look at is under the annotate tab. Probably about the only other thing you need to know right now is how to add a current scale or delete a current scale. And so that's where the icon is. Okay. So now let's go ahead and create some objects. I'm going to go ahead and set my layer to be dimension. And I'm going to start dimensioning this object. So I click on linear. I've already set my scale. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create a linear dimension across the bottom here. Again, to get my spacing correct, it should be a 5 8 inch spacing. And I want this spacing, I'm going to type in 2.5. That should be the distance off of that edge to where that first dimension is placed. And now I can go ahead and use my baseline dimension command. So I'm going to come over here, annotate on the ribbon, click on baseline. And I'm going to start dimensioning across the base of this object. So I'll put a dimension there and put one more there. 
and so that automatically sets my spacing for me okay and these are annotative objects which means that the size of the arrowheads size of the text is all being controlled by this annotation scale okay so go ahead and take a couple minutes and I want you to go ahead and dimension this object using that quarter inch equals an inch scale and here's what your object should look like after you have it dimensioned so go ahead and take a few minutes to do that okay by now hopefully you have this dimensioned and you also have your dimension breaks drawn in here on a few spots and but more or less it should pretty much match exactly what I have on screen so let's start taking a look at these so this first one said annotation visibility it shows annotative objects for all scales okay so if we go ahead and turn it off then you'll see nothing happened all of my text all of my dimensions are still being shown if I change my scale though well I have to turn off this other icon first so let's try that again so just go ahead and uh, the other icon automatically adds scales to annotative objects when the annotation scale changes go ahead and turn it off now we're going to change to a different scale like this 3 eighths of an inch equals an inch and so with this first icon with it turned off these what you see here is all the annotative objects that are set to that scale and so we don't have any on there but if we move back to our quarter inch equals an inch all of our dimensions show back up because it's showing just the dimensions, just the text that's associated with that scale. Okay, This other icon, we kind of already looked at it. With this other icon turned on, then whenever we change our scale in here, it's going to automatically add that scale to our dimension or to our text. So if I change this to be 3 eighths of an inch equals an inch, now all of my objects here are assigned to that scale. Okay and so we may or may not want that and we'll talk about that in more detail as we get to the assignment so then the other part that I said that we need to look at was under the annotate tab add current scale or delete current scale so if there's just one or two dimensions that you want to be on a different scale just go ahead and turn both of these icons off come up to add current scale and what we're gonna do is now go ahead and switch your scale say we want to switch it to eighth inch equals an inch and then if we do add current scale now we all of our dimensions show up and we can select which dimensions we want to be on this current scale so I'm just going to select these three along the bottom and then I'm going to hit enter and now those three dimensions have all been added to this eighth inch equals an inch scale and those are the only three that are on that particular scale I can go back to my half inch equals an inch everything shows back up three eighths of an inch equals an inch it's all still there but I'm only viewing what is on this one particular scale okay and so similarly I can do delete current scale so let's say I have my three eighths of an inch equals an inch I turn my visibility on so I'm seeing all those dimensions they're all currently on this 3 eighths of an inch equals an inch but I want to delete them off of this so do delete current scale and I just want to delete all annotative objects so just select them all hit enter and it's going to take them all off of that scale I didn't see any change because I still have annotation visibility turned on so go ahead and turn that off and that's the only dimensions that are assigned to this scale so go ahead and switch back to our quarter inch equals an inch all of our dimensions should come back on and now we're ready to finish this drawing up okay so the last thing is after you get it dimensioned now you'll go to your layout tab so go to layout one and then a warning here is just be very careful what you click on in here when you double click inside this purple border that's actually going into model space so any changes you make in here are changes you're making to the model so if I delete off this dimension for my diameter I double click outside of that border I come over to model and that dimension will be gone okay so this by double clicking in this window that actually is just taking me to a temporary model space to where I can make some small minor changes to my 
to my model. Also, once you've set your scale, so once you've set your scale on your viewport, and we did that earlier, quarter inch equals an inch, once you set that scale, you can double click inside that viewport, but you don't want to zoom in or out. Watch down at the annotation scale as I zoom in. See how it's changing? And as I zoom out, okay, it changes as I'm zooming in and out. And so if that happens, we just want to make sure to go back and set that scale prior to finishing up. That should be one of the last things you do with your annotative drawings is check that scale. And if you want to, so really all you can do once you have dimensioned your object and you're trying to get it centered on your page, the only thing you want to do is pan. And so you can pan by holding the wheel down and you can pan those views around, but you do not want to zoom in and out. Okay. So then get it so it looks like it's centered on that page. Go ahead and double click outside of it. Also, if you want to, you can go ahead and click on that viewport once you get your view centered, you get your scale set. Just to make sure you don't mess something up, you can go ahead and lock it. So if you lock it, now you can go in there, but that scale is going to stay the same. You can try to zoom in and out, but it's not going to let you. Okay, The only thing you can do is just view it from inside there. So that lock button uh, could be a pretty good button to become familiar with of how to use that. All right, and then from there, it's just a matter of finishing up, making it look like a finished drawing. With this one, I want you to go ahead and finish it up, and I'll show you what the finished copy is going to look like here in a minute. And then after you get it finished up, I want you to go ahead and print it and show it to me. All right, so this is what your finished drawing should look like. And what I did was I created the text just right here in the layout, and so I didn't do it inside a model space. The text is just right here. I can select it in my layout and I can move it around. And same thing with my bill of materials. I just created my bill of materials with a scale of one and attached it to that magenta corner. Updated my title block as I needed to. Finished dimensioning. And so I'll zoom in on each one of these parts so you can see what's in there. And so just go ahead and take a few minutes, get this finished up, and when you're done, be sure and print this off so that I can see a copy of your first annotative drawing that you finished in this class. The last thing is centering in uh, your paper space, centering an annotative object. What I do is if I double click here in my model space and just turn my grid on, you can turn your grid on and then just count the squares. Count your squares to the left, count your squares to the right, and they should be equal. Same thing on the top and on the bottom. They should be fairly equal on that too. And so with, uh, with paper space layouts, we can't be as exact, but we can still get pretty darn close on centering our views here in AutoCAD.